Hello and welcome back to another session. In today's video, we will discuss about WebSocket APIs. WebSocket APIs support two-way communication, that is both the users and the backend can send messages back and forth once connected. So it's used in real-time applications like chats, broadcast messages, or real-time dashboards. You can create WebSocket APIs in AWS using AWS API Gateway Service. The sample use case that we are going to see today is a real-time chat application. There are a few components here. First is obviously the API Gateway Service itself, which is used to set up the application, and that is connected to three different lambdas to perform three different actions to establish connection, to send messages, and finally to disconnect. Then we have a DynamoDB table which keeps track of all the current connections. Now let's get into the AWS console and get started with setting this up. Okay, so we are in the AWS console. And first let's start by creating the DynamoDB table. We're going to call it as WebSocket Connections. And this is going to be used to store all the active connections and we are just going to store the connection ID so that's going to be our partition key and these connection IDs are auto generated uh, values which are generated by the API gateway okay so while this is being created let's get over into lambda console and start creating our three lambdas so the first lambda function is going to be WebSocket Connect. And this is going to be invoked whenever there is a new connection to our API gateway. And I'm going to use Python 3.9. That's the latest version supported by Lambda. And let's get into Visual Studio and see our code for WebSocket Connect. So this is using Boto3 library. And it's just doing a put item to DynamoDB. Uh, with a connection ID. So let's copy this over and paste it into the lambda code and deploy this. And we are going to do two more things here. Um, head over into configuration and environment variables. We are going to create an environment variable to store the DynamoDB table name. So this way, if you are going to change the table name, then you need not touch the code. It's just enough to change the environment variable. That's always a coding best practice. And the second thing which we are going to do is the uh, permissions. So we are going to set up some Lambda uh, role permissions in order for it to be able to put item into DynamoDB table. So a la when, whenever you create a Lambda function, it automatically comes with a default role, which allows to add CloudWatch logs. Uh, and we are going to add a DynamoDB permission as well. Uh, this is going to be specific to, our, to the table which we created. So let's add the region of the table and as well as the table name. So this is the ARN of the DynamoDB table. And the action that we allowed is put item because that's the only action that we need for this particular DynamoDB table. Okay, so we are done with our first lambda. We're going to say follow the same steps and create two more lambdas. Uh, the second one is going to be WebSocket Disconnect. So this will be invoked whenever there is a disconnection request to the WebSocket API. Again, this is going to be Python 3.9 as well. And the code for this particular Lambda is going to invoke uh, DynamoDB again, but it's a delete item. Uh, so we are going to delete the connection ID that's being disconnected. So let's paste it into the Lambda code source and deploy this and repeat the two configuration steps. The first one is going to be setting up the dyn environment variable. WebSocket table and the table name. And the second thing which we're going to do is update the permissions. So under execution role, uh, policies, and edit the policy. And this time we are going to add 
DynamoDB service again, but delete item. It's very important to have limited permissions to your Lambda so that you are well aware what your Lambda can or cannot do. And it's always a good pra practice to have restricted uh, permissions. Okay, uh, so we are done with our second Lambda as well. And moving on to our third and final Lambda. So that's going to be the main one, which is going to be used to send the messages. Uh, so we are going to call it as WebSocket Send. And again, it's going to use Python uh, 3.9. Create the function. Let's get into Visual Studio and have a quick look at the code. Uh, so this is lengthier than the other two uh, because it's going to do a scan of the DynamoDB table, get all the connection IDs. And I'm also going to get the uh, API gateway uh, API endpoint. So these endpoint URLs can be derived from the event message that is being passed into the Lambda by the API gateway. And we are going to go through each of the connection and post messages to all the connections which are stored in DynamoDB table. So this way we can ensure that all the connection, all the act active connections receive the message. Let's paste this and deploy. And under configuration, we are going to repeat the same, uh, set up the environment variable uh, for DynamoDB table name. And then uh, we are going to update the permissions. So here we need uh, two different permissions. Uh, as usual, we need the DynamoDB permission, but this time it's going to be a scan. Uh, so let's get into the role and into the policy. And the policy. So choose DynamoDB as the servers. And under action, it's going to be scan. And table, uh, it's a specific resource, the region of the resource, and the table name. So this is going to be our first permission. And the second one is going to be specific to the connections. So this time the service is going to be execute API. And we are going to allow the action callers manage connections. So this will allow uh, the Lambda to post messages into all the uh, connections. And uh, I'm selecting any of the API gateways within the uh, account. And because we haven't created an API gateway resource yet. So once we have that in place, you can come back and edit this these wildcards into the actual data. All right, so we have all the three lambdas and the last thing to do will be creating the API gateway itself. Okay, uh, let's uh, get into the API gateway uh, console and here you have different types of APIs. So in our use case, it's going to be WebSocket API and we're going to give it a API name and then a route selection expression. So this is how your API will know which route to redirect your request to. So you have to mention the route name within the action. Okay, uh, so we are going to define three different routes today. Uh, one for connection, next one for disconnection, and the last one for sending the message itself. So send message is going to be a custom route. And also you have an option to specify a default route. Uh, so if your action doesn't match any of the connection routes, then it will be redirected to the default route. And we are attaching each route to the lambdas which we created. Uh, so you have various options. You can either create it uh, integrated with a lambda or a mock or a mock API. So in our case, we are going to do all three routes to the uh, three different lambdas that we created. And I'm just going to call the stage as demo. 
finally review all the details that is the api name and the route selection and the routes itself and the integrations and finally the stage okay create and deploy it this will be ready in a couple of seconds okay so we have our api up and running so let's get into stages and if you you can even have multiple stages for the same uh, api gateway endpoint and here copy the uh, websocket url and let's see how that works so i'm using postman here you can either use postman or you can you even use any ws client that you prefer but in this case copy the url and head over to postman and connect it i'm going to do the same for uh, and make establish two other connections so i'm just uh, creating a new websocket uh, connection every time here okay as you can see there are three different connections now and let's get into dynamodb and see if there are three different entries so let's go into WebSocket Connections table. And as you can see, there are three different connections now. So each one represents an, one open connection from our Postman uh, UI here. So now what we are going to do is send, uh, try sending a message. Uh, so I'm going to send a message from our first connection. So the message body should have uh, something called action. So this is the route. Uh, name which we mentioned while creating the API gateway if you remember so the action should match the exact route exact route name so in our case it's then message and then you have to specify the message itself so here I'm trying to just send hello from terminal 1 so let's just assume that this is terminal 1 and 2 and 3 there are three terminals so in the logs you can see there is a message being sent and if you go into terminal 2 and 3 you should be seeing uh, those messages being received all right so it works so you can do the same from a different terminal as well uh, because they are all interconnected so uh, you can send a message from terminal 2 and that will be received by terminal 1 and 3 so you can have additional attributes here and then play around by sending only to specific terminals or only specific connections and you can um, restrict from being able to send to different connections and you, you have various options here and I have disconnected one of the connections so if you come back into DynamoDB you'll, you'll see that that is gone right so it's that simple uh, so this is one of the use cases with an API uh, gateway web sockets. You, you can do various other use cases with this, like setting up real-time dashboards and also any real-time operations. Uh, so if you have any questions around this or WebSocket APIs in general, please leave them in the comments below. See you soon in the next video. Thank you.